How do you become you? How does this we'll first do is we will concentrate on the introduction, the verses that come before these eight qualifications or these eight qualities. We're going to be looking in depthly into verses three and four. Okay? So let me read verses three and four again. Slowly follow along. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. Okay. So, what does it mean to become new? According to these verses, it means to become partakers of divine nature. New means being partakers of divine, God's nature. You know, when I ask, how do you become new? What comes to your mind? We typically envision coming into our life and changing us. You know, most of the kids envision it like this. First, I say, okay, I accept God into my life. God, come into my life and change me. And we wait for God to change us. That's what usually people, or, or actually, that's usually what youth usually envision. We say, God, I accept you, come into my life, change me, and we wait. Most of our attitude is like this. You know, what we're saying is, you know, God, we're just going to stay where we are. Everything is just like as before, except for the fact that I accepted you as my personal Savior. It's up to you, God. Come and change me. For a lot of us, this is the attitude that we have. And it comes from our children ministry. You know, in our children ministry, the, the message usually is, all you have to do is invite God into your life. God, come into my life, change me. You know, but children ministry teaches you this because when you are a child, when you are not mature enough to understand what a relationship is, what responsibilities actually mean, they can't give you anything more than that. But you guys are teenagers, right? You guys are no longer kids, right? Right, Boram? You're not a kid anymore. Right. You're teenagers. <clears throat> Rebecca just had her birthday yesterday. She's now 15. So you're not a kid anymore, right? Yeah. Actually, she's almost tall as her brother. <laughs> okay, no, maybe not. <laughs> anyway, but you guys are not kids anymore. All of you listening are all youth, teenagers. You understand more about who you are, what you are doing, whether it's good, bad, whether it's according to God's will or not. You know what you should be doing and how you should be living. You understand that now, right? You're not like, it's not like you're kindergartners anymore. Well, just as you grow physically, mentally, and emotionally, you have to grow spiritually. You wouldn't blame your parents if you, do, if you didn't do your homework, right? How many of you say, mom, it's your fault, I didn't do my homework? How many of you blame your parents for, for getting bad grades? No, it doesn't happen that way. 
Same thing. You shouldn't blame God for not changing you. You shouldn't blame God for being lazy and indifferent to what you're supposed to be doing, your responsibility, for you not partaking God. You can't blame God that, God, I didn't partake of you because I'm just waiting for you. What the verse says here is you must, you must become a partaker of God's divine nature. You are partaking in God's divine nature. It is not God coming and partaking in my nature. It's not like, God, I'm here. Come to my life and partake in me. Have some of me. Here, here you go. It doesn't work that way. It is you who must partake in God's divine nature. You're the one who have to partake in God. You don't just stand there. You must be the one who seek. You must be the one who go. Actually, you know, God is already at your doorstep of your heart. It says in Revelation, he's knocking at your door and he's waiting for you to just open the door. You can't just sit on your couch and say, God, come in and just take hold of my life. God doesn't barge into your life. God is waiting for you to come to him and partake in his nature. You know, of course, God will help you. In fact, God must help you. Otherwise, you are powerless to do anything yourself. Verse 3 tells us this. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. His divine power. It is his divine power that enables you. But you must be the one to desire, to ask, to depend on God for his divine power. You must partake in God's divine power. Well, what is God's divine nature that I have to take, partake in, become partakers of? Today's scripture first tells us what it is not, okay? Let's read verse 4. It says this, Having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful nature, what is not divine nature is the sinful desires that's in all of us. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. You know, sometimes you watch YouTube and the lust of the flesh takes over and, and you start hungering and, and desiring to go further and further into the lust of the flesh. Sometimes you look at cars or, or, or you get clothes or you, get, you look at things, the things, good things of the eyes, which you never have enough. And it fills you. Oh, I want to get that. Oh, I want to get that. The pride of life. Even when somebody tells you no or disagrees with you, you get angry, you lose your self-control because of what? Because your pride. How dare he does that? I'm right, you're wrong. The pride of life. Even in our relationship with parents, we get upset. Mom, dad, why are you doing that? This nature is already in me. It's already in you. These things, these things are what God is saying. These things are what you have, to, you have to get away from. These are the sinful nature. This is not his divine nature. This is sinful nature. These are things that, you, that is currently in you. We have to escape this old nature, this sinful nature, and desire to and make effort to partake in God's nature. Verse 3 goes on to identify what it means to partake in divine nature. Okay, let's read this again. It says, through the knowledge of him who calls us to his own glory and excellence. Divine nature is not God coming into my life, our lives, 
to make our lives better. That's not what it means. No. He calls us to what? His glory. His excellence. Becoming new in God's divine nature is to answer God's call to join His glory and His excellence. Do you see the difference? Maybe in your children's ministry when we were young, we would say, God, come into my life. I'm just going to stay here. I'm not going to change. You come and change me. I'm just going to do everything I used to do yesterday, today, tomorrow. But somehow, God, you changed me. What God is saying is, no. You have to partake in what? My nature. You have to get away from this old nature. You have to say, hey, no more of this. No more of my self-centered. I want to get God's glorious, His divine excellence. You can't just be happy staying where you are and being dormant. Just being passive, not doing anything. Just life as usual. You will never change. You will never become new. You cannot take partake in God's nature that way. You must want God's divine nature, God's glory, God's excellence, God's goodness, God's perfection, God's beauty. That's what you have to desire. You have to take your eyes off the world and look at God. How many of your day are you looking at God? If you're spending 18 hours of your 17 hours or 19 hours looking at the world, you're going to be filling yourself with the things of the world, the old things of old nature. There's no way you can partake in God's nature that way. As we close, I want us to read the first part of verse 3 again. Okay, this is very important. Everybody, turn to your Bible. Start of verse 3. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. The question is, what do you want from your life? What do you desire in your life? What God's divine power, what God's divine nature grants us is the power to life and godliness. If you don't desire godliness, to be, to be holy, to be Christ-like, to hate sin, you will not desire to become partakers of God's divine nature. If you don't want to be holy, if you don't want to be Christ-like, you are not partakers of God's nature because that's what God's nature is. If you are happy and content, living as you have always lived, you cannot partake, you are not partaking in God's nature because you are just partaking in your old nature over and over and over again. Let me remind you of this, this one thing. No, let me warn you of this one thing. Life without God is no life at all. Life without God, relation, like we talked about yesterday in our Christian relationship. When you have relationship and in your relationship, there's no God in the middle. If your relationship is devoid of God, that relationship cannot be beautiful. It cannot last. It cannot sustain it. it's, it's, its beauty. Life without God is no life at all. Life without God is, is a lonely life. It's a dark life. It's an unhappy life. It's unfulfilled life. It's sinful life. It's a miserable life. It's condemned life. It's life without hope. Life 
only becomes true life, worthy life, fulfilled life, happy life when you live it in God's divine nature. Amen? Do you understand? Okay. So are you ready to become partakers of God's nature? You all remember the prodigal son, right? When he comes to his senses, what does he do? He, he goes, what? Oh, life with my father was so much better. Actually, it was the best life. So I'm going to stay here and say, Father, come to me. He doesn't do that, right? What does he do? He gets up from his pigsty, and what does he do? He goes to his father. He becomes partaker of his father's life. I need all of you to really understand. You cannot become new by just waiting for God to come and change you. You will always just be old. You're just going to be an older self of you old. You're just going to be 15 years old of the same old nature. 16 years old of same old nature. 18 years old of same old nature. 30 years old. 50 years old. You will never change. It's just going to be a continuum of your old self. I challenge you right now. You love God. You have to desire to take partake in his divine nature. You have to say, God, the things of you, the holiness, the good things, I desire those things. Those are the beautiful things. I'm going to partake in your nature. Okay. Let's pray. I have any father we come before you, Lord. You have you revealed your secret to us, Lord. That in your divine nature, you give us the power to life itself and godliness. That life must be with godliness, Lord. That your nature, your divine nature, is the new nature that we have to desire and want and, and, and live for. And you are right there at our doorstep, knocking at our door. And you're saying, open the door and let me help you. Let me make your life really a life, a happy life, fulfilled life, beautiful life. Not an ugly life. Not an unfulfilled, lonely life. I pray that your Holy Spirit would give each and every one of us wisdom to understand and desire to seek this new nature, that we want to partake in your nature, Lord. And I pray that in the next nine more weeks, Lord, as we dive into how to become you, you would really grab hold of us and help us to realize how to become you and, and discover you and set our course in life towards you, Lord. We thank you for today. We thank you for this week. We thank you for keeping us safe. We thank you for providing everything to us. We thank you for your grace and mercy and your love. We thank you for our parents. We thank you for everything and anything in our life because every good thing comes from you, Lord. Help us to never, ever forget that and desire more and more of you. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, I have a couple of announcements. Uh, one, uh, it was Veronica's birthday Friday. And then it was Rebecca's birthday yesterday. And it's Isaac's birthday tomorrow. So, happy birthday. And okay, it was my birthday That's yesterday too. <laughs> so, it's all, so it was our birthday, so let's, it's, uh, remember that, congratulate each other. Uh, we had our first week of Christian dating seminary, uh, seminary, no, seminar <laughs> yesterday. We're going to have three more weeks. It was, it's fun. Yeah. I really encourage all of you to come. Last week was an introduction, but next week we're going to start with love. 
So please send me an email if you if if you want to do it. Okay. And uh, we have moved our stuff to the new church yesterday. So next Sunday will be our last Sunday here at our old church. So please pray that our transition will be smooth. Let's go into our small group meeting. Teacher Jiyoung, can you?